Hello everyone, welcome to this video, where we're going to be looking more into S Foundation's punching shear checks and comparing them to some hand calculations. And the model that we've chosen here for this example is the same as you might have seen if you've watched the other videos in our series. It's an isolated footing, and it's 3.5 meters square, uh, 650 millimeter thick slab, and within that slab we have 25 m bars at 350 millimeter spacing, with 75 millimeters of concrete cover. We also have a 500 millimeter square concentric pedestal. And as far as our material properties go, we have a concrete strength of 25 MPA, maximum aggregate size of 20 millimeters, and a steel yield strength of 400 MPA. And as for the loading, well, we have the loads all being applied concentrically on the top of the pedestal. And for this example, we have a dead load of 900 kilonewtons, a live load of 1200 kilonewtons, and a factored combination load of 29.25 kilonewtons. So this is what's actually going to be driving the demands for our code checks. And our goal here is to compare the hand calculations to S Foundation's rigid analysis results. So we'll start with the hand calculations. The first thing we want to do is understand the effective depth that we're using for punching shear. And I've drawn a little diagram to explain this. In S Foundation, we draw our we have reinforcement in both the X and Y directions, whereas most hand calculations will just assume one direction at a time. Now for punching shear, we're going to actually take the average depth of the rebar. So you can see here we have two layers. We have the X and Y, and they have different effective depths, but when we average it out, it equals 549.8 millimeters. So we're going to keep that value in mind while we go through the other calculations. An important value to compute for punching shear calculations is critical shear perimeter uh, for the two-way shear, which we call B0. And in the case of our model here, we're going to assume that it's an interior punching shear perimeter, meaning that basically we have concentric loading and there's no moments or anything that might be looking at other parameters where it could be a punching shear perimeter governed by an edge case or a side case. So the formula used to calculate this punching shear perimeter would be this one here with a half meter column width. And we can calculate that to equal 4.199 mm meters. And I've just drawn this here just to illustrate what that's using. So for the Canadian code, we use a distance of D over two away from our pedestal face uh, to calculate this punching shear perimeter. And again, we're assuming it's around the center, uh, centered on the pedestal. However, S Foundation will check other options as well. So we need to be able to determine the concrete shear resistance, and we can use the information we've calculated in the previous slides to do that. So the concrete shear resistance is the smallest of the following three values. And there's different formulas within the design code to dictate what those values will be. So there's three different criterion that are used, and we take the smallest of the, uh, the three, which happens to be 1.24 MPA. So that's going to be our concrete strength, our concrete shear resistance for two-way shear. Now we also need to determine the punching shear demands. And we already know that our factored column load is 29.25 kilonewtons. And with that load and the size of our pedestal or our pad, uh, we have a pressure under a pedestal, assuming a rigid pedestal or a rigid uh, pad rather of 238.78 kPa. And knowing our punching shear perimeter and the, the shape that it's formed, our punching shear area will equal to 1.1 meters squared. So we can calculate the equivalent pressure force that's pushing up on the pad to equal 263.16 kilonewtons. That's basically just the pressure under the pedestal multiplied by the punching shear area. And if we subtract this value from our factored column load, we can find the equivalent demand force, and that equals 2661.84 kilonewtons. And then we can determine a punching shear demand from that, calculating the punching shear stress using this formula here. And we can actually ignore the right-hand side because we don't have any moments or eccentricities uh, due to the type of loading that we have. So we can calculate the punching shear stress, or the demand from punching shear, or two-way shear, as 1.15 MPA. And luckily for us, the concrete resistance for two-way shear is greater than the demand. Now let's go into S Foundation and just understand how the software is able to determine the same information for us. So this is a model that we're dealing with. Again, I've 
illustrated this in other exercises, but I'm going to go through it again. If we go to the define pad pile cap dialog, here we can see the thickness represented with uh, 650 millimeters, and we have a 350 or sorry, 3.5 meter square pad with 25 m bars spaced at 350 millimeter spacing in X and Y. And for this example that we're looking at, I have our top and bottom X bars dictated as so. I'm really just focused on the bottom bars. So right now we actually have our bottom Y bars uh, above the X bars. This option is unchecked. And at the bottom, we also have 75 millimeters of concrete cover, like I said. So let's go ahead and run our analysis and code check. And we're able to get the results. And right now it's showing me the governing code check result, which is one-way shear. We've already got another video dedicated to one-way shear, so I'm not going to dive into this. But what I can do is I can change this code check display here just to show me the punching shear, or two-way shear. And I can see the utilization ratio is 0.93. Now I can expand the details of the code check if I expand this option on the right-hand side. If we had multiple monitors, we could actually show this on two different monitors so we wouldn't have to expand and contract. But here I can see the pad punching shear here. It's giving me a utilization of 0.93. My demand is 1.153. And my capacity is 1.235. So those numbers should look pretty familiar to us. And I can drill down into the details and look at the isolated footing and specifically the punching shear around the pedestal. If I had piles or multiple pedestals, I would be able to see that around each pile or each pedestal. And this is going to just show me the more detailed explanation of the results. So I can see the pedestal dimensions, the effective depth being used for this code check, which matches what our hand calcs were, the shear perimeter, and this each side as well. The critical section location is interior, like we expected. And then I can see the equivalent demand force. The demand is 1.153 MPA, which matches my hand calcs. And if I just go down a little bit further here, I can also see the capacity. So I can see here that we have a capacity of 1.235 MPA, which again matches our hand calcs, which is exactly what we want to see.